<laughs> but the third one is one that I do have a problem with, is shut up. Uh-oh. <laughs> You're saying, oh, Sister Paula, I didn't want to hear that. Are you telling me to shut up? You know? And, um, but hear me out here before you, you know, come to any conclusions. And, um, but anyway, the, the shut up. In other words, it's kind of nice to know when to open your mouth and when not to open it, you know? And I am learning with problems that get to me sometimes in the churches I go to or whatever, is, you know, not to think about it or talk about it. If you talk about negative things, that means you're thinking about it. And so if you're going to stop thinking about the negative thing, then you need to shut up or talk about something else. Anyway, it says here, say nice things and learn to listen. Learning to listen is one of the hardest things for me to do because I am a talker. And I have, I, when I go to our various prayer groups, I go to the prayer chain group and our lectionary studies and all that, I really work at that, at trying to listen to what somebody else has to say. But sometimes I get all carried away and the pastor in one of the groups said to me a few months back, Paula, give somebody else a chance to talk. When the Oregonian did a review on me uh, way back when, when I had Fred Willard, the movie star, on my show and, and, and all of that, the, re the Oregonian was reviewing it and referred to him and me saying that Fred Willard managed to get a word in edgewise. You know, it's hard for me not to talk. And, um, but we need to not only just say nice things and smile with people, like we just said on the other one on dress up, you know, to smile at somebody and say nice things that will bless them. But another way you can bless people without preaching the sermon is to listen. Be a good listener. And if I was going to look in the mirror and preach to myself, that's exactly what I say. Paula, you, you, you know how to talk. You're a preacher. But, and I can preach sermons, but sometimes it's better to forget the talking, forget the sermon, smile and listen to what the other person has to say and know that you are concerned about what it is they're worried about and not just wrapped up in your own problems. And sometimes I could get so wrapped up in my own problems that somebody else will try to tell me their problems and I am too wrapped up talking about my own problems to even listen or care what their problem is. Guilty as charged, I'll own up to it. But like I say, I'm working at it and hopefully you will too. And it's to know when to talk and when not to talk. And I love this next sentence here in this email. Oh, thank you, Ruth, for sending me these things, even though I just now am, they got out of the shovel after four years, three or four years ago. At any rate, here it is. God gave us two ears and one mouth. You get that? God gave us two ears and one mouth. So he must have meant for us to do twice as much listening as talking. There you go. We got two ears and one mouth, and God may have created us that way, so we'll do more listening than talking. And it quotes Proverbs chapter 13, verse 3, the words of wisdom of Solomon. He who guards his lips guards his soul. And there's another proverb that says, keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. And there's another scripture, and James says that somebody can be religious, and yet if they cannot bridle and control their own tongue, their religion is vain. It doesn't mean anything. So learn to wake up, dress up, and shut up, and learn to smile, and learn to listen because God gave us two ears and one mouth, which means he wants us to do more listening than talking. Amen. And like I say, I am preaching to myself on this and I am getting blessed and I hope it's going to bless you and help you. It's the simple truths of our interaction and our everyday living, which will accomplish more for the cause of Christ and more for the kingdom of God than all of the theological degrees and sermons that we can spout off.